also supported the JCPOA either directly or indirectly and referred to the American action as an incorrect action. And myself as well, during the meetings that I held with 16 different world leaders, one of which, one of the topics of discussion was about the JCPOA. And all of them uh, agreed on two points. One of them was the principal importance of the JCPOA for relations between the countries, as well as the importance of the JCPOA for non-proliferation, as well as its importance for security and stability, as well as what it signifies for the success of diplomacy, as well as their unhappiness for the withdrawal of the United States from the JCPOA. And another point upon which they all touched was the support of Iran to remain in the JCPOA. And they described that as the wisdom of the Islamic Republic of Iran. They were saying that America was aiming for Iran to leave this accord as well so that they could move forward with comfort. And it was our decision which would have faced Mr. Trump's policy vis-a-vis -vis the JCPO with defeat or success. So, this doesn't mean that today we are not experiencing the pressures that the United States is exerting on nations, but always the Iranian government has been in positions that are much tougher with its unity and with its positions, with its resolute positions, and with its resistance has been able to surpass such difficulties in the past, just as it will do so today. Other topics of discussions that I held with European countries' leaders, as well as the 4 plus 1 meeting at the ministerial level, which was held here in New York, the important point was that the five remaining countries are resolute in their support of the JCPOA and act upon their designated roles and fulfill their commitments and the actions that America wants to take in order to exert pressure on the economy of Iran to be able to diminish those pressures with everyone's fulfillment of their commitments. And the press statement that was, the joint statement that was released showed that the European Union, Iran, China, and Russia are keen on the preservation of the JCPOA. And we do hope that with all of law-abiding countries and multilateral-oriented countries, we can ultimately put this behind us in an easier fashion than it was originally anticipated. Our people have experienced resistance in the past. Our people are patient people, and it will be no different today. But other than the economic pressures, this round of sanctions has created new conditions for domestic manufacturing and domestic production, which can be seen as a domestic opportunity for our country. I'm ready to answer your questions. Start questions and answer. answers. Please introduce yourself and your affiliation before raising your question and limit yourself to one short and clear question so that we have more time for more questions. Let's start with Edis Lederer, Associated Press. The next will be uh, Rick Gladestone, New York Times. Thank you very much, President Rouhani. You mentioned the willingness of Iran in your speech to the General Assembly yesterday to welcome America back to the negotiating table. 
if it accepts UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which endorsed the nuclear deal. That resolution included language barring Iran from launching ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Excuse me, this please limit the short question. Um, the question is here. Are you signaling that Iran is willing if the United States honors the nuclear deal to cut back on Iran's ballistic missile program? In the JCPOA, there is nothing about missiles. From the very beginning, it's been extremely clear what we are saying and what we have been discussing. If they wish to trample upon their commitments, they can do so. They don't need excuses. The resolution 2231 is extremely clear. Therefore, what we are seeing is this. The United States of America made a mistake. Either they will come back or they will continue on the path of this mistake. The United States of America one day will come back, sooner or later. This cannot be continued. This does not benefit the people of the United States of America. What the United States government is doing does not benefit the Iranian people, does not benefit the American people, nor does it benefit Europe, nor does it benefit other world countries. Therefore, all of us, including you reporters and journalists uh, must strive so that an individual who has made a mistake, we need to help that individual to come back from that mistake and be at the right starting point again. The next question is Rick Gladeston, New York Times, and the next uh, will be Pamela Falk, CBS News. I wanted to ask you, sir, um, if you can give us an update on the status of the uh, Americans who are imprisoned in Iran, the Americans and the British, specifically uh, 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 the uh, father and son uh, um, who are, uh, in, have been in prison for a couple of years, uh, Shi Yue Wang, the Princeton University graduate student who's been in prison for a couple of years, uh, Nizan and Zagari Radcliffe of uh, Britain. What are the prospects for uh, releasing them and, and letting them come back to their, come back home? Thank you. I thought that you wanted to show more care for all prisoners from all over the world, imprisoned everywhere. All of us must strive from a humanitarian standpoint. If we can help, if we can help an individual who is imprisoned to render the necessary help and aid and assistance to that prisoner, uh, the Iranian government within its own framework does this in order to facilitate meetings, in order to facilitate transfer of information, but the basic of a trial and the verdict that is then issued is all under the guise of the judiciary and it's the same in all countries. Iran is no different if an Iranian in the United States is imprisoned. If we ask them about it, they say, well, the court has issued the verdict uh, based upon which that individual is detained and uh, is imprisoned. At the most, they tell us we can facilitate things or we can make the situation easier. Uh, 
Therefore, what you say vis-à-vis -vis this and address that question to me as the chief of the executive branch of the country, I can do all I can uh, as a humanitarian, my foreign ministry does this, my administration does this, and some of the names that you uh, touched upon, in, lately they were furloughed for a number of days. So these are the facilitations that we talk about, the assistance that we talk about. But in the past, with the United States of America vis-a-vis -vis rendering help and aid to individuals about whom they inquired in Iran, or individuals, our citizens who were imprisoned here, there were some assistance, there was some assistance given. In this field, we were never against countries conducting talks, having dialogue, and reach certain results. Question, Pamela Falk, CBS News. The next will be... Please do set BBC. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. My question is President Trump mentioned the new sanctions that will go into place in November against Iran. If the EU mechanism, the blocking mechanism, is not acknowledged by U.S. law, which often they are not, and trade stops, what will Iran do, and is there a breaking point at which Iran walks away from the nuclear deal? Thank you. Allow me to clarify this point. Uh, there are no sanctions that are yet to be implemented by the United States of America. They were always proactive, as a matter of fact. Uh, those individuals in the United States of America who were always, regardless of the facts, seeking sanctions against Iran and what was supposed to become active in November became active uh, in September. September. So there are no other sanctions that uh, will start in November. America wants to exert pressure vis-a-vis -vis oil sales, vis-a-vis -vis banking relationships, uh, relations and commercial relations. It has spared no effort, the United States, on this path. And there is not much left for her to do in November. So this month of November, uh, thing that we keep hearing is something that is completely rhetorical. Uh, what we can do, though, vis-a-vis -vis other partners, you know, our decision is to keep working with other countries. In my opinion, for any country that can uh, trample upon the U.S. sanctions, this would be a great point of pride because of the illegal nature of those sanctions. And it is against the U.N. Security Council resolution. Uh, therefore, as a matter of legal responsibility, all countries from around the world must strive in order to break this uh, action taken by the United States. We are in contact with our friends throughout the European Union uh, in order to find channels that not only would enable us to conduct our normal economic activity, it would also bring the needed protection to firms and enterprises that are currently dealing with Iran. The last point you brought up in your question was, uh, I will address this way, we have thus far remained within the JCPOA, we have lived up to every single commitment within that agreement, and up until such time, when we keep reaping the benefits promised within that agreement for our nation and our people, we will remain in the agreement. Should the situation change, we have other paths and other solutions which we'll embark upon. <laughs> 